Good morning, St. Alphonsus. Today is Monday, the fifth week of Lent. In today's Liturgy of the Word, we have two readings where a woman is accused of adultery. In the first reading, the book of Daniel, chapter 13, Susanna is falsely accused by two judges who could reasonably be called evil. In the second reading, we have a woman caught in the act of adultery. She's brought before Jesus, not so much to punish her, though that would certainly happen, but to trap Jesus. Now, as I prayed on these and reflected on these readings, I was struck by questions that popped into my head. So I want to talk to you this morning about praying the gaps. Praying the gaps is, is praying about the things that are unsaid. Much of what's said in the Bible is, of course, very, very important. But I think what is unsaid is equally important. For instance, let's take the first reading with Susanna. So she goes through the trial, she's convicted, she's headed to her execution when the Spirit of God comes upon a 12-year-old boy, Daniel. And Daniel speaks up, I will have no part in this. Now, where was her husband? Where was her family? Why aren't they the ones to speak up? Why a 12-year-old boy? And another question is, why did they listen to him? How many of us turn out children, turn a deaf ear on children? And let's look at the second reading. So the woman is brought before Jesus. They present to him the evidence and then say, so teacher, what do you say? And Jesus bends down and writes in the dirt. And he continues to do this up until after pestering him, he finally straightens up and says to them, he who is without sin should cast the first stone. Now, thinking about this, what's he praying? Is that what he's doing? He's down on the ground writing in the dirt. What's he doing? Well, for me, praying this gap took me all the way back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. His perse persecution didn't begin at the Garden of Gethsemane. It started when he first started his ministry. His influence over the people was a, a uh, problem for the Pharisees, the Sadducees, for all the people in power. They didn't want to lose their influence, and Jesus was a rebel to them. So all along, throughout his ministry, they persecuted him, trying to trap him. And what did Jesus do throughout his ministry? He, he used the same power we all have. He turned to God our Father. He prayed. And that's my suspicion of what he was doing when he bent down and wrote in the dirt. He was praying. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was praying. Praying in maybe in a psalm, maybe in the words God he taught us, you know, our Father. And what about the, the woman? She didn't protest. She didn't claim her innocence. She didn't ask for mercy. What was she doing? My guess is she was praying too. And let's go back to the first reading with Daniel. Why Daniel? I think because Daniel was open to God's will. He was young. He wasn't jaded by life. God filled him with his spirit and had the power to stand up, the, the courage to stand up and say, no, this isn't right. So that's what praying the gaps is. And if I were Jesus, or if I were the woman standing before him, I think the prayer I would turn to would be the 23rd Psalm, which is also the responsorial Psalm for today's readings. We all know how it begins. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. <laughs> I should read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I encourage you, pray the gaps. What is unsaid is as important as what is said, and that's what leads us to God. It's our search, it's our effort, the effort we make to understand what's said to us that brings us closer to God. So my prayer for you today is the 23rd Psalm, which I just read for you. May you always be blessed. May God anoint you, and may you always live in the house of the Lord. Amen.